Hello everyone, this is Rahul Pawar and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the interview questions that were asked in Decision Minds and this was for L1. Okay, but before we you know, proceed with the interview questions, let us thank our subscriber who has you know, shared us his experience and questions so that it can be of help to others who are preparing. So without wasting much time, let us get started. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And here we go. So it all started, you know, uh, I understand, you know, there are a little less calls these days, uh, you know, so I hope, you know, and pray that, you know, the situation in the market uh, improves with the time. So, but till then, what we can do is we can only prepare. So don't lose hope and we'll prepare and, you know, let us wait for a better season coming up. Uh, so the first question that was asked is, tell me about yourself. Like we say, you know, everywhere you go, any project, any skill, you go, this is what matters. Tell me about yourself. Okay. So I think we have created very fine videos that you will not find anywhere in the YouTube. Okay. So I've customized it according to Tableau. Maybe you can watch that, you know, tell me about yourself and uh, that video where I have included the description, what we need to talk and what we need to tell. And, you know, we can express, uh, I'll be pasting that link in the description box. Maybe you can watch that and, you know, and you can refine that, you know, in your description that will definitely help you or give you more points in your, you know, description. That is something that I would like to highlight here. Second question is explain your last project. This has been the struggling point to many who are, you know, working or who are preparing for interviews. See, when you're working or, you know, when you have added a project, I would just like you to remember four points here. What is the purpose? What is the purpose of that project? Okay. What is your de design layout? Okay. And what have you accomplished in that project? So I want you to at least on a high level, remember all of these important points. Okay. And uh, how are your business users going to use the report? This is something that I would like to all like you to always remember this because based on this only, you will be getting your questions. So if you're not able to answer this, it, it will give you give a negative impression to the client or the interviewer whoever is taking so don't you know give him that chance prepare well okay and next is you know uh, what is difference between twb and twbx i think you know everyone should know this answer one is tableau workbook and second one is packaged workbook tableau workbook in the sense only like say I'm writing some formula here. Okay. I'm writing A plus B. Now this A plus B will only return me a value when I am connecting to database. Like say under A, I'm getting two and under B, I'm getting three. Right. So if I say A plus B, what will be my result? It will be five. Right. So when will I get this five when I'm passing this two and three under A and B. So which means I need to connect it to my database to get that. So when you are saving your work as a TW, only the skeleton of that workbook is being saved. Like say only your formulas, but that will return values only when you are connected. Now, when you are sh sharing your work as a dot TW B to me, assume and i do not have that data source then the dashboard or the workbook that you have created will become blank why because in my system it is not able to find that data source but in your system it it can recognize that data source and it is populating that value but when you are saving that as a twbx what is happening here is your underlying data is also being saved at that point which means when you're saving that work as .twbx and you are sending it to me, which means that data that you have in your machine is also being copied at that point of time. And it it is also coming along the workbook to me. Then I can also view that workbook. So that is the, the difference between TWB and TWBX. So you should be in a state to explain the background working of TWB and TWBX. 
okay so what are user functions now when i say functions many might answer uh, like say you know rahul you know we have string functions we have uh, uh, number functions we have uh, logical functions we have date functions and all but apart from that we also have user functions so these functions are mostly used when you are connecting to the server and all so if i go to my if i go and create a calculated field here and under functions if i click there is an option called as user this are user function full name so you can talk about the list of user functions that are available full name will give return the full name of the customer or the client whoever is logging in is a full name so it is again a kind of statement which can validate is member of again to you know uh validate to which group he belongs to is username user domain username or these are all the different functions that are available under user function so whenever you are getting a question like this you can talk about that now here next question was he gave two tables and asked to create a write you know all the four types of joins i mean the statement sql statement sql statement for four types of join and probable output so if you know this is one of the most viral questions of 2022 okay i think in many interviews they have asked this question so you know you, you can go and search in youtube you'll find lot of videos on this topic specially and based on the number of views that you have seen on that video that it itself tells how many times this question was asked so you know it, it is kind of it has kind of become mandatory for everyone to know how to write a joint statement and what is the output that is expected you know many 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 are failing even though it is being asked by so many interviewers in so many interviews still we are lagging so when you are preparing try to prepare for this question as well and see the output so here what matters for us is as a developer data matters for us what is the data that you are getting okay and then what is what is your primary table what is your secondary table so try to understand from that point of view and you will never go wrong what is the data that i'm getting from primary table what is the data that i'm getting from secondary table when i am getting my data from primary table secondary table so if you are trying to do that it will help you a lot in writing the query here okay so i think in our channel also we have a video specially made for this okay i'll pasting that as well maybe you can go through that video whenever you get time but it is kind of mandatory question in tableau like how we have tell me about yourself a mandatory question in every interview that we go this is also like kind of like close to mandatory question that we are getting many times in interview okay so next is create a Pareto chart and explain so Pareto chart is again a customized chart that is not available in show me so if I go to Tableau and under show me, if I check, I do not have that Pareto chart. So Pareto chart is generally built on uh, the principle called as 80-20 rule. Okay. So which means 80% of the uh, thing is occupied by 20% of people, something like that. So you can remember it as 80-20 rule. So to create that, I'm just taking two measures here, some of uh, category and sales okay and i'm sorting it and now what i'm doing is i'm taking the sales measure again and i'm dropping it on the right side just to create an angle here so now what i'm doing is i'm just taking this adding a quick table calculation here and i'm just adding running total from here and along with that i am also adding a secondary calculation here Okay, and for secondary calculation, I'm doing percent of total. So that's how, this is how it looks. So once it is done, maybe for one, you can may, uh, make it a bar chart. And a second one, you can make it as line chart. And you can make it, uh, you can change the color. 
and this is how it looks okay so this is your Pareto chart which is indicating 80 20 rule here okay maybe you can draw if at all he is giving you uh, option to share the screen and talk otherwise you can just explain him uh, next is what is LOD types and syntax so one question we are definitely seeing on LOD in any interview that we go so you can definitely watch my video that is that will help you a lot not only in terms of you know detailed questions on LOD but also on the probable use cases of LODs that we must know as a tableau developers okay so here you can talk about you know what is lod and types like say fixed is there include is there exclude is there and uh, table level or scoped lod is also there and uh, you can talk about how we can write syntax here like say starting with flower brackets and in that fixed or whatever you are writing which is the scope of your lod followed by dimensions okay so you can have multiple dimensions here dimension one comma dimension two and followed by colon and then one aggregated field it can be your sum it can be your uh, minimum or it can be maximum whatever you want you can do that that is your lod expressions okay difference between union and union non again in many places this question was asked repeated times okay so to make it a simpler it, is, it will look something like this union means it will give you unique records like say here a b c d we have but here if you observe c and d are repeating here but when you are using union statement it will not repeat those in your output but whereas union all will repeat with the values which means it will also throw duplicate values into your output so based on what we need we can use either union or the union union all statement okay so next is the discrete and continuous this is a more about you know how do you want to display your data like a like as a broken structure as a or as a continuous structure so you can use whether as a discrete or continuous Next is what is cascading filter and order of explanation or maybe order of filter it is, okay? So filter order we all know, maybe dimension filter, you know, uh, sorry, data source filters, extract filters and all that we can talk about and cascading filter also we have seen use case many times. So cascading filter is more about the drop down filter drop down and how that value is getting updated based on my filter selection from my dashboard okay whereas context filter is about the data so don't get confused between this cascading filter and context filter many get confused cascading filter is about the value in the drop filter drop down okay not your dashboard data whereas order of filter again we can talk about how filters get executed okay uh, yeah so i think that's it about from my side in this video i hope this video helped you if it does don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and have a good day.